I'm going to bring you guys a very quick story on this early Wednesday morning, and I will continue to follow up on this story. I actually heard about it yesterday on my way to work, and when I got home and I was actually able to see the video, it just really saddened me. It really did. It really did. This happened in Springfield, Illinois on July 6, 2024. Police knocked on the residence of 2868 Hoover Street. A woman had called 911 concerned that there was a prowler on her property. It would take several minutes for the woman to open up the door as police continued to knock. One officer is just a bit agitated, telling her, are you coming to open the door or not? Hurry up. She actually says, please don't hurt me when she opens the door. We aren't going to hurt you. You called us. The police explained to her that they checked her property and the surrounding area and there wasn't anyone around there. She also explained and apologizes that she was putting clothes on. That's why she was taking so long to open up the door. Now the police are ready to leave. They're telling her that there's nothing else that they can do for her. There's no one around her property. The cop then asks her, are you doing well mentally? She says something about medicine and she turns to walk back in and she actually says, I love y'all. The police officers chuckle. They probably never heard that. And really not from a black person. I'm just saying. But she says that to them. I love y'all. Then for the second time, he asks about an SUV outside her driveway. He asks if it's hers. She says no. She doesn't know whose it belongs to. Someone brought it and left it in her driveway. Now they're asking her for ID and they enter inside her home. Now they do ask her things about, you know, the SUV, like, was there a dent there? She said, yes, there was a dent there. And they ask her something about the windows of the SUV. Now the police are now in her house and they are shining their flashlights on various rooms within the little area that they're standing at. And her cell phone rings and she's talking to somebody over the phone. It sounds like it might be another person of law enforcement. I just have that feeling. That's what it sounds like. And she tells whoever it is to hold on. And she's looking for her ID because the police are asking for her ID. And they say, look, we just need to know your name. She asks the police officer to hand her her Bible. He says, we just need your name. We just need your last name so we can get out of your hair. So she says her last name is Massey. He asks for an ID again. He says a driver's license, anything, anything. She cannot find it. She's, you know, looking through a bag, looking through paperwork. I, she says she doesn't have her ID, but she wants to show them paperwork. Now, at the same time, there is water boiling on her stove. And the police officer says, remove the water off the stove. We don't need a fire around here so she goes up to removes it and she picks the water up jokingly while she is she asks why are why are they moving now she says all this jokingly because she's chuckling and and they're chuckling and the police responds away from the water away from the steaming water is what he says and again he is laughing if you haven't heard the video please Look at the video. I just didn't want to post it. But please look at the video. And she repeats, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She says this twice. He says, you better fucking not. I will fucking shoot you in your fucking face. She says, okay, I am sorry. She is trying to put her hands up, even though she has water 
in her hand. He tells her, drop the fucking pot. But he says this as he is shooting her. And while this woman is laying on her kitchen floor with hot water all around her, he is telling her to drop the fucking pot. Amazing. The pot's already been dropped. And you have dropped her by shooting her at least three to four times. He yells in on his walkie-talkie, wounded female. The other officer says, I will go get my kit, meaning a life-saving kit. He says, she's done. It was a headshot. He says, there is water coming to my feet as he's walking towards it. That normally happens when you walk towards a puddle of water. It normally does come towards your feet as you're walking to it. He asks the other officer, is he good? Repeatedly, he says that. Repeatedly. Then he says, there's nothing else that we could do. I'm not taking hot water to the face. So you can kind of see what he did was wrong. He knew it. His officer knew it. And what he didn't know was only one person had their police cam on. Just the one the second police officer, to my knowledge, he had took his police cam off. He did. He sure did. And again, if you have not seen this awful police cam footage, go look at it. Go look at it. Draw your own conclusion. If he was in fear of his life, because that seems to be just a word that's always used in these type of incidences. So you let me know if you feel that he was in fear of his life or in fear of first to second degree burns. You you find that out for yourself. I really would like to know. I really would like to know. It just doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't make sense. Sean Grayson is 30 years old. He was the police officer that shot this woman just like that. Her name is Sonia Macy. She's 30 years old as well, I believe. Now, Sean Grayson was arrested because the county believes that this was not a justified killing at all and he is a flight risk and they also say the judge says that he is a danger to the community but his lawyer argued that he has colon cancer well people in jail do have cancer and other various diseases now Grayson faces five criminal counts including three counts of first degree murder and if convicted He could face 45 years to life in prison. He's actually expected to be back in court August 26th. And of course, I will be following that most definitely. Now, I did find a little bit on Grayson. He worked six different law enforcement agencies within four years. Since August 2020, Grayson worked less than one year at Auburn 3rd Police Department, one year at Logan County Sheriff's Office, and just over a year at the current police station that he was working at, the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office. He was also arrested twice, they say, on a Class A misdemeanor, DUIs in 2015 and 2016. He, of course, pled not guilty for the shooting death of Sonia Massey. Now, when you see the words BLM or you hear Black Lives Matter, a lot of people misconstrue Black Lives Matter. And the majority of us, I'm going to say, the majority, like 99.9% of Black people, when we say Black Lives Matter, we're not saying that no other, no other race matters. We're saying that black lives do matter. That's what we're trying to say. In this case, in Sonia Massey's case, 
her removing boiling hot water from her stove because that's what he asked. She should not have gotten shot repeatedly three times in the face and in the head. She was not a threat at all. At all. She wasn't. That's when we say Black Lives Matter. It really is. But I know people like to change the narrative on that. I don't want to get off the subject, but I have to. If you guys have been following me, you know that I kind of go to, you know, Texas to get to Atlanta. I do it. But this means something to me. I have a co-worker. She's an older Caucasian woman. And when I first started work about almost two years ago, I had a small strap that said BLM. I used it just to keep my ID in it because I currently drive and I don't want to take a whole purse with me. I just wanted my ID for in case I got pulled over. It was a very tiny purse, just enough to fit my ID and like a chapstick. That's it. And and a few dollars, you know? And I remember she looked at me She became to be a bitch anyway. But I remember she looked at me and she said, you can't do that. And I said, do what? She said, wear that Black Lives Matter. It said BLM. It was the initials. Could have been my, it could have been my freak, my freaking initials, you know? But it just said BLM. That was it. You can't do that. And I said, why not? Her exact words is because white people won't think that you feel that their lives matter. And I responded to her, why would they care? Now, please work with me here. I don't like this bitch. (laughs) I've been working there. You know, let me not even go there. But I do not like her. I do not like her at all. And, And she feels the same. But she feels the same about any woman. That's a whole nother story. But this is what we mean. And like I said, people change the narrative on Black Lives Matter. Mm -mm. No, no, I have white friends. I have white family members. So no, no. This is what we mean by Black Lives Matter. This right here, this was unnecessary. This was very unnecessary. I will continue to look, continue to look further in this case, definitely. Definitely, like I said until the end, but I will bring you some more information to this story, but I just wanted to get it out now. This is horrible. This is very horrible, and I'm glad that they arrested him right then and there. No getting out, no trying to find him, no marches, no say her name because this dude is on the beach, and he's 30 years old too. He's 30 years old. It's a lot going on with uh, Mr. Grayson, ex-police officer Grayson. It's a lot going on with him. Why he couldn't stay at a police department. What was going on with him. I believe they're going to really look into him. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't care, you know, for people other than who you are, is what I'm saying. I know there's a lot of black people that don't care for anybody but themselves, White people, Indian people, you know what? The way, and I'm going to speak for the majority of people, the way we feel now is we just want to go to work, (laughs) make our little bit of money, pay these overpriced bills, go to the overpriced grocery store, and we just want to mind our business and, you know, try to make it back safely to our families. And just in case we do need the police, ugh. Hopefully we never do, right? But just in case we do need the police, we we don't want this. We don't want this. They should be able to detect something. If this woman wasn't drunk and you could smell alcohol, they should have been able to detect that maybe something wasn't going on with her, but she wasn't a threat. She wasn't a quote, I'm fearing for my life, unquote type deal. She just wasn't. She really just wasn't. And thank goodness his partner had the police cam on because he would have lied like hell. He would have threw that burning water all over his body and said she threw it on him. You know, maybe even threw it on his partner to make it look even better. Oh, he would have did that. We don't know what his problem is. Only he knows what his problem is. And while he sits in county jail, 
I want him to think about why he really did this because only he knows. Really only he knows. This is a very, very shocking, shocking, sad, disgusting story. It really is. And before I go, on my channel, anyone new to my channel, on my channel, I've spoke about, I've did videos on all type of people being, you know, um, violated in some manner by the police. And yes, there have been white women that have been picked up and thrown on hard concrete by police officers and they didn't do anything. Not at all. Maybe cursed a little bit, but you can curse. You're an adult, right? They've been picked up and thrown. Thrown. You know, I've seen a Spanish man that was beat up, handcuffed from the back. And even a white guy that was chased down the police. And then when he put his hands up because he knew he couldn't get away anymore, he put his hands up. They just came around and they just killed him. So, yeah, there, there's violence everywhere. There really is. When it comes to cops of all races, yes. Men, women, whatever your ethnicity is, when you are involved with a corrupt cop for whatever reasons that he is, you know, pulling you over or whatever's going on in his mind mentally, you can be a target. And yeah, it doesn't matter what your race is. I get that. It doesn't matter what your gender is. I get that. But I'm a black woman, and she's a black woman, and I can really relate. I can really relate. What if I called the cops because I thought somebody was around my property? And I'm constantly drinking tea, so what if my kettle's on? That should have could happened in my house. I wouldn't have deserved it, and Sonia Massey didn't deserve it. I will continue this story. Rest in peace, Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. And my condolences to her family.